want you to give a big welcome for Craig Lee, who's come all the way from Kentucky with his family and friends to talk with us about the hymn. Hey, this lady right here, Kaya, it's really amazing. I'm slated here with very spiritual on the phone. That's what this is all about, a lot of spirit. You know, the last time I was here in this good place, and thank everybody for here, my God, good crowd. The last time I was in Missouri was uh, with the White Plume family, and we were before the 8th Appellate Court of Appeals in St. Louis. Uh, my corporation, Madison Hemp and Flax Company, along with Tierra Madre, Woody Harrelson's company, Woody's attorneys, the White Plume family, and uh, we presented the case that the White Plumes had every right, every sovereign right as a nation within a nation for them to grow hemp according to their laws and the treaties of this country with those people. And the government stepped over those bounds Held, held these people in hostage the first time that they grew them, held them in hostage with gunpoint while they destroyed their crop. The second time, there was legal means. They had their light crooms to absolutely stop planting the crop, period, and the family can no longer be associated with hemp on sovereign land in a sovereign nation in a free country. Are we crazy? Yeah. Are we crazy? Yeah. Hey, our politicians know better than this. They really do. The Court of Appeals, three justices, give us five more minutes, five minutes to present our case because they thought it was a strong case. We do have a case here, the case of the missing case. And the missing case is the one that the Drug Enforcement Agency, the United States government, and the politicians are standing in the middle of because now we're at a crisis in this country, a major crisis. We are at a time in the spiritual world that we live in that the synthetic based society is up against the natural order in Mother Nature herself. Woo! Mother Nature is screaming for this crop to come back. And it is coming back, folks. It is. We have people that you may not know of that's involved in the hemp industry behind the doors that, you, that I've been in meetings with in Washington, D.C., former CIA director James Woosley, and, and, and they're working to develop an enzyme to break down the cellulose of anything to make ethanol fuel from cellulose. Former CEOs of Chevron, Esson, and Exxon have always stated that the number one fuel that they will be seeking in the future will be cellulose fuel ethanol. That's it. Corn will not work. You're living in a corn belt. It won't work. Hemp, once it's grown in the field, and I, I'm just going to fill in some blanks for you here to help you out with what's going on now. You know, the politicians, there's not a one of them. You pick up the paper today, USA Today, any paper, and they're speaking and talking about alternative fuels. Well, they've stepped into our hornet's nest. Do not let them off the hook. Let him live in denial. Hemp was used in World War I, or World War II, excuse me, to, to promote and to develop rope for the industry in Kentucky. Right now, we're at a crisis again in the world history, and we're at war with the oil industries of foreign countries, where now we can take this plant and we can grow it. And I have come up with some figures that's off the cuff, but you can build a, a biodiesel plant pressing the seed oil in 120 days. We can have biodiesel flowing through this country from hemp oil because hemp oil is 30, the seed of the hemp plant is 32% oil. 32%. And it's just like vegetable oil. As a matter of fact, it's better than peanut oil. It's better than canola oil. It's good for human consumption and it's good for refining into biodiesel. The Germans used it in the Battle of the Bulge. When they run out of diesel fuel, they revert it back to the hemp fields and the hemp stocks of the, of the stocks they had in the seed that they had stored. They had it pressed, and in a matter of days, they had diesel fuel. Don't tell me we've got a shortage. We haven't got brains. Our damn politicians is absolutely ignorant of the idea or living in total denial. 
Now, anybody that's PTSD or got bipolar, they tell you that you're living in denial. Well, my God in heaven, we've got a world of people up there living in denial. We've got a whole Congress, a whole legislature. You know, the Farm Bureau Federation, I made five meetings. And out of these five meetings, they kept yo-yoing with the issue because they didn't know how to handle it. They didn't know how to handle it. One minute they're for it, the next year they're against it, the next year they're for it, and the next year they're against it. So they're in a yo-yo. But they are the Farm Bureau. They do know about this crop. So if you know any Farm Bureau politicians, the people that's lobbies your legislatures in Missouri, get on board with them because they are educated. This crop is coming. It's coming behind the scenes. There's people that's wanting to develop the, uh, the patent for the enzyme. There's already people working inside Cargill that's wanting the patents to the seed varieties that the farmer will plant in the earth. This is God-given. No company, no organization, nobody should own this except humans themselves to plant it in God's earth and grow the natural plant that comes out of it. My God, we need to stand up for this. Hit your politicians. Right now is the best time in history. This is the first time in history. I'm 55 years old, and it's the first time in any of our lives that any of us have had the chance to grow alternative fuels from the land. Do you want to be an oil producer? It's easy. Do you want to be an ethanol producer? It's easy. Get into agriculture and get into these things fast. What I am telling you is you're ahead of the curve. You're ahead of the curve. I've done been, in the, they've got a program called 25 by 25. Dot org. It is tw year 2025. We will be 25% ethanol in this country. In the year 2000, we passed a hemp bill in Kentucky. 60%, 66% of the state legislatures voted for industrial hemp. That was two. That was a majority. A majority of the Senate voted for it. The governor signed the bill. I said on the Kentucky Industrial Hemp Task Force. We had two meetings. They buried the bill. I'm trying to get the governor we have now to dig it back up and come back with alternative fuels because he's standing in the shit now. He's standing in it. He's standing in it because he's talking alternative fuel. When you talk alternative fuels to the politicians about him being alternative fuel, you are a winner. It doesn't have to be medical marijuana. They know all about that. This, the move for medical marijuana is going going on for 30 years. They know all about it, believe me. But they do not know about industrial hemp as alternative fuels for biodiesel, cellulose for ethanol, food, a high protein source of food from the meal after the oil has been extracted, and the fiber to save these trees. The fiber to put into automobile parts that's laying back there on that table. And one other thing that I talked to the Farm Bureau people about, and that's carbon, carbon dioxide. This plant consumes carbon dioxide way more than trees, and it also puts off oxygen. The reason why I know this is there's a sign, there's a, everybody knows about the AWACS plane flying over in infrared, showing you little marijuana crops. They used about California. Used multi-million dollar equipment to find a plant God given. But they knew how, they knew what was going on, and what we found out in the hemp industry in Kentucky with all the research we were doing, is the roof factor. It's R-U-E, radiation utilization efficiency. The plant absorbs more of the sun's rays, therefore it absorbs more carbon dioxide and it emits more oxygen. We have got an air filter banned from this continent, from, this, from the planet. And we're all sitting here talking about global warming. So I think and this, is my, this is my whole beef here, is for the simple reason that all of us now can stand and talk to your politician about this crop as alternative fuels, get hooked in on it, get tied in on it, because they cannot run from you. If they are, they're living in denial. And I don't want a nation living in denial that I live in. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you have a good evening. This is a great, great event. All the way from Kentucky, y'all.